We're gonna make a division, then we're going to make a statement on the basis of that division that connects the dividend, divisor, quotient, and remainder. Okay, so let's do the division first. There are my um, two bits, the polynomial I'm gonna divide by, which is really the dividend. This is what I'm dividing by, the divisor, so that's why I call it D. What you end up with often is called P for polynomial, so at least I don't have two things that are both called D, but dividend and divisor. So let's get the important bits now. Firstly, coefficients of the actual polynomial. Two, negative one, uh, zero, because there are no x squared terms. Negative three and negative five. Quite a lot of negatives in that, okay? And then I want the zero of the divisor, the zero of this guy, which is two, okay? So I'm ready to go. To go. I need my first step, which is just gonna be to write down the, give me a name, what's it called? The leading coefficient, remember we said, things get names in proportion to how much they get used. I keep talking about this number. It'd be great if it had a special name. That's why it does have a special name, right? So I'm gonna write down the leading coefficient, and then here comes my repeating step, my multiplying and adding, multiplying and adding. Ready? Blink it, you'll miss it, okay? Multiply, add, multiply, add, multiply, um, add, and multiply, add. Like seriously, like I'm still, I'm still writing down the question if I'm doing this by long division, okay? Just because it takes me so long to write down the x's and what have you, okay? So there's the coefficients of what I need. I was dividing degree four by degree one, so I should end up with degree three, okay? So this is two x cubed plus three x squared plus six x plus nine with the remainder of 13 and I'm home, okay? So this, um, this conclusion, this summary statement I'm going to make, I have mentioned it before, it's what we call the division transformation statement. I'll write that down. The division transformation. Okay? And I've written it down a couple of times, I just haven't stated its name. Okay? So it's saying the original polynomial is divisor times quotient plus remainder. Let's do that again. Divisor times quotient plus remainder, okay? How does it look? Are you happy? Again, I can very quickly confirm that I did it right because when you have a look at the only constant term you're going to get out of this, right? It's gonna be negative two times nine, which is negative 18, and then I add 13, which gives me the negative five I'm supposed to get. Okay, are you happy with that? Okay, so what I'm gonna do from this is I can make a general statement, right? For not just this particular dividend, this particular divisor, I can say, look, any polynomial, I can express it in this division transformation way, right? Divisor times quotient plus remainder. I'm interested in these divisors in particular, right? Now, I want you to have a look at this for a second. If I take this guy, because of the way I factorize that little chunk at the beginning there, right? Watch what happens if I substitute in the value a, right? Let x equal a and then see what unfolds, okay? Because of the way I factorize this first bit, you end up getting a take away a, right? Do you see that? Like I've just substituted in a's everywhere I see x's and there were just two spots, right? Do you notice that? So being that I've got a take away a at the start there, what happens to that first expansion? It just becomes zero, right? It disappears. In fact, all you get left with is the remainder, right? R. P of A equals R. In other words, like what, what is R? The remainder after I've divided, right? So here's my statement, and this is a theorem because it's so important. In other words, P of A, if you put in A, if you substitute into your original polynomial, right? That's the remainder if you divide by x minus a, right? If I divide by x minus two, then if I were to go back to this original polynomial and say, well, what's p of two? Okay, let's actually just crunch this out. I'm gonna get two times 16 minus eight minus six minus five. That's 32 take away, that's minus 14 minus, that's minus 19, which is 13, right? Which is the, the remainder that I got before. Always a bit of a relief. My mental arithmetic works, okay? So you can see 
if what I really wanted to know was the remainder, and this is why I want to know that in a second, then I don't have to go through this whole division. Synthetic's fast, but still, it's still time consuming, right? If what I really want is the remainder, I can go straight there directly like this, okay? And I can do it because of the division transformation. And putting in that value, A, for example, putting in that value 2, is going to make this part all collapse. You see that? It all just disappears because this part becomes 2 minus 2, which is 0. I don't care what this number is going to end up being. I'll just end up with 13, the remainder. Okay? So this guy here, what we just wrote down, this is called, because it's all about the remainder, this is called the remainder theorem. Okay? It's the theorem of how to find the remainder quickly of a polynomial. But then what immediately follows after that is, well, the most important remainder I'm after is to actually factorize something when I don't have a remainder, when there is no remainder, or when the remainder is zero. Right? If the remainder is zero, then you've got this scenario. Remainder zero, right? In other words, you don't have some guy hanging off the end. You've got a perfect factorization. Everything sits nicely, okay? So if the remainder is zero, then x minus a is not just some random divisor. It's a factor of the actual polynomial that you started with, okay? If you can divide through and successfully get no remainder, then you have a factor. And that's why this last bit here, because it's not just about remainders, it's about factors, it's called the factor theorem, okay? So the remainder theorem and the factor theorem are really just, well, this is a special case of this guy, right? The factor theorem is the remainder theorem when there isn't a remainder, when the remainder you end up with is zero.